All right, welcome to this Tobacco University video. Here we're going to be investigating self-crosses compared to outcrossing in cannabis plants. And this is a scientific research study, so I'm going to be presenting some data along with some pictures to help you understand the differences between these two and how they impact cannabis. So starting with the research article that I pulled the information from, we could see the abstract listed here, uh, a link and sources cited here. And I'm going to try to give you a general summary of this article. So first off, we'll have to define what kind of outcrossing and self-crossing is. And sometimes self-crossing is simply referred to as selfing. So an outcross, let's start there, is when two unrelated or at least distantly related plants are bred or crossed together. The outcrossing uh, increases the genetic variability. And we can see that here. You have different individuals mixing up the genes. Compared to self-crossing, this is when the maternal and pollen uh, from the parents are the same genotype. The goal is to reduce the potential for genetic variability, and this is different than cloning, which is an asexual form of vegetative propagation. So keep in mind that selfing or self-crossing is not the same as cloning. It's reducing the genetic variability where cloning is almost an identical uh, copy they are so little different procedures. In this case, we're just reducing the um, chance at variability. So when is selfing used? In particular, well, femp, uh, um, for hemp, feminized seed producers often use selfing to maintain a strain name. The process of selfing a cannabis plant may lead to inferior plants for cannabidiol or CBD production. So that's kind of what we're looking at here is, yes, we're using this maybe to maintain a strain name, but is it also going to reduce or negatively impact CBD production? So when we're looking at the self versus uh, outcrossing kind of uh, examples here, and here we can see some great images. So the self uh, progeny here were significantly smaller than outcross progeny for all measured traits. And I think we just look at the image here, uh, letter A and letter B being outcrosses, and here letter C representing self crosses. We can see a stark difference. Well, the study goes on to say that the self progeny here uh, compared to the outcross was about half of the height, had fewer internodes, reduced internode length, half the leaf area, half the total dry weight, delayed by seven days in flower development, 36% less floral dry weight, equal CBD producers, both met the legal limit of 0.3% THC. So just note that while there is these stark differences, just a limit with any scientific study, there's always some sort of limit. With this one, it is that the study was only looking at three strains and the priority of three crosses were evaluated. Now, looking, we saw the stark differences there, but now if we kind of look at the numbers, if we're kind of looking at the vegetative and flower growth in yield. These findings provide the phenotypic and genotypic data to support that selfing in cannabis induces inbreeding depression. So while there's a lot of numbers here, and you're welcome to pause the video and take a look at it, I want to just make note that this first column and the second column represent the outcrosses, and this last column represent the selfed crosses. And with letters of the same name, or having basically no statistical difference. So we can see the outcrosses, uh, pretty much A's and just a couple B's in there. For all the self-crosses, we see the B's and the C's indicating that there is a significant difference. Looking at this by the Fisher's least significant difference with a p-value less than or equal to 0.05. So again, looking at some statistics supports what we saw there with the large images or phenotypes of the plants. Now, what was also noticed in this research study is that all self progeny exhibited leaf variegation. This is known to be a recessive genetic trait in higher plants. So that, again, indicates that there's probably an accumulation of these uh, recessive genes. Variegation was first evident at the cotyledon growth stage. We can see that here. Cotyledons, remember, are the seed leaves. For most plants, the variegation persisted through day 35. And however, three plants had variegated leaves until the end of the study. So it might be a prolonged effect there. Now, self and cannabis looking at uh, induces inbreeding depression. So evidence of inbreeding depression in self cannabis. Well, self feminized seed had less vigorous plants and reduced yield. Increased homozygosity with negative or recessive traits such as variegation observed, which suggests inbreeding may occur more rapidly in hemp than other crops. This just shows an example here of potential corn plants. We're seeing that reduced height there, that inbreeding depression does occur in plants, but this study at least indicates it may occur a little quicker in hemp crops. So we're looking at crossing different strains can increase yields. Crossing two different strains to maintain or increase heterozygosity could be a strategy to increase yields and plants may be more uniform. If crossing within a strain is necessary, growers should consider using two different genotypes of the strain to produce feminized seed and maintain the strain name. So just a little kind of indication there.
Now, what are we looking at as far as like if you're a grower, how does this kind of relate? How can you kind of apply this information? Well, hemp breeders may want to consider developing inbred parental lines to generate F1 feminized seed, which could produce plants that exhibit improved crop uniformity and hybrid vigor. It may be beneficial for feminized seed producers to use outcrossing instead of selfing to generate feminized seed for CBD production. So that's kind of just a general overview here looking at hemp compared to self-crossing and outcrossing.